and just preach to an audience and that audience was God. But today God has honored us with his people again. Amen. Yeah, it was not easy for me to preach to an empty hall, but the Lord taught us new things in this. It was amazing how God is a God who does new things always. And here he did it again. Amen. I'm sure you're strengthened through this time. Your prayer life and uh, the knowledge of the scriptures, maybe the reading, maybe time with your family, and maybe helping other people around. Yeah, must have must have increased in your life. Is that right? Yeah, keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up. So this was a time that the Lord has given us to learn new things as never before because we have, have never experienced in this world we have never experienced anything like this before I think in our way it was probably in 19 early 90s they had that situation when that influence again and uh, other problems uh, various other diseases like this pandemics but uh, this time it was different for all of us but praise God, a lot of things happened during this time also. Funerals, Brenda's mother went to be with the Lord, and uh, uh, some of her were able to attend the funeral and pray with her and be with her in that time of need. And uh, other funerals in the single congregation, a couple of other funerals were there, and uh, a lot of things happened during this time also. But we were able to be with our brothers and sisters and help them in the, to go through that situation, right? Some were sick, some were hospitalized. And, but praise God, none of them were uh, attacked by this COVID-19. But uh, attacked by many other, I mean, this is only 19, may, 20 other, 20 other diseases and uh, problems that people are going through today, right? This is life. Many people are afraid of this, scared of this. No. You follow the instructions of the, the health instructors or the officials. You follow them. This is life. You can face it. You can't, you can't run away from this. You can't avoid it. You have to face it. So might as well you take good care of yourself. Immediately after this service, you are asked to move out of this building because another crowd is coming in. So please don't, we don't, we don't have time to stay and fellowship with one another, but say, you know, also maintaining distance, yeah, something new. Anyway, this morning, please turn your Bibles with me to one thing again. We have covered a couple of episodes of Elijah, and today what I have in mind is, to ask the question from me and you, where do I stand or where do we stand? Where do I stand or where do you stand? Okay? Now for that the scripture that we read is from 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 1 to 21. But we will be reading the scriptures as we move forward. Okay? Now we live in a world, friends, where many don't like to take a stand for many things. You come to your spiritual life, you come to your family life, you come to your work life. Many people don't like to, like to take a stand. Even the politicians today, they are the best they come. The politicians are the best they come. Politicians like to fight the fence on issues most of the time, right? They are for it while being against it. Now, but our meeting, you know, so many things, and many people are saying so many things. But we just wanted to follow the instructions of the health department. And we did that. Praise God. And you cooperated. Praise God. So here we are. Amen. In the presence of the Lord worshiping Him. It's not only the politicians, but sadly. What I want to tell you is that we live in a time where too many religious leaders are doing the same thing. They are not taking a stand. They are not taking a stand against sin. They are not. And recently the riots that came up in, uh, in the States of one man dying 
Millions and millions of people are dying every year. Millions. How? By abortions. Not allowing these babies to come and see the world. That's not theirs. That belongs to God. Sadly, meaning in the time that too many religious leaders are doing the same thing. They don't and they won't take stand on issues of sin. You know what? Of fear of offending their families. Of fear of offending their friends. Some people don't like even to call themselves Christians. They just stand on the fence on that also. If something happens on you, become a Christian. Expecting others support and help. That's not the right thing to do for Christians. That's not the right thing. Because as we study this word today, about three categories of people I'm going to discuss with you today. Ahab and Jezebel, the people those hearts were so hardened. And they cared for the lesser creation than God's unique creation of man. Ahab was so worried that his animals were dying. He was not worried that the people were affected, that people were dying. And similar situations in today's world, right? Similar situations. They don't care whether people live or die. What they want is their thing. That's the situation today. If you, if you just look at it and see the contemporary situations that come up. So this is sad. This is sad. Because many, many leaders, church leaders, they do not attack sin. They, they, they don't talk about sin. Because if you talk about sin, people will not come to church. They are afraid of losing people coming to church because they are, they are going to lose on their giving. They are after money. We are not here to serve the Lord for money. We are here to serve the Lord for His goodness and His mercies. As God's people, this is something that we really need to understand. A lot of teachers today, a lot of preachers today, they are very safe, very safe, even in person in the gospel. They just don't want to hurt anybody. They don't want to hurt. They, 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 they fear that their family might get affected. They fear that their friends might get affected. They fear that the society that they live in might get affected. So they just keep away from talking about sin. A lot of motivational speakers you hear today. Motivational speakers. Not gospel preachers. Motivational speakers. Isn't this sad? Is it not the gospel? They are afraid they will be rejected if they take a stand to speak the truth. They, they fear that. If I speak the truth, people get affected and I might get very unpopular. So they fear that. They want a like. They want a like all the time. They want a like. I like you. As long as you don't hurt, I like you. Even among the young people, today you see the young, the young people are being told that nothing anymore is really wrong. Just be careful not to hurt anyone and everything is going to be okay. Young people today, they do as they please. This is where the holiness, the repentance, the attacking of sin must come from the pulpit. Now here in this church also we have, when we have that problem, we address it. And then I want to thank God for the children of this church. I saw, I saw many children, those who were with long hairs and during the COVID-19, they had their other problems, you know. They were locked in and they, they were doing as they pleased. And some people are like Sai Baba, and some people are like you know, all these cricketers, those who come with colored hair, so I told them, 
none of them have to come up on the stage or to do any work in the church. You can come and sit and worship and go, but you are not supposed to get involved in the work of the Lord here in the church if you don't like to take a stand. Am I too harsh on that? We have to draw the line, friends. Somewhere we have to draw the line. You can't just do it like that. You can't just allow things to just go a while like that in the church. You must decide holiness. You must decide what God decides. Amen? Yeah. That must that is a Christian. One who's committed and dedicated is from her life to please the Lord. So we see Ahab and Jezebel. That's one group. Okay? And then we have Elijah and Obadiah in the same story. And then finally we also have people who said nothing and they look. These are the three categories of people that I would like to share with you for a few moments. And see whether you are in one of those. And please, please, we have no authority to do anything to you, but you have the authority to do something for yourself. So that you can ask God, come in repentance and ask God to change your heart and the ways of living. So, you know, sir, I said Newton. He was a brilliant mathematician, we know that. And not only that, he was a great physicist. He gave us the invention of the telescope. Most of you know that. And his studies in gravitation opened the understanding of great forces in the universe. So I said Newton. Yet, when he was old and when he was asked, as an old man, what do you consider your greatest discovery? Now you're the man who discovered many things, okay? that have profited the world today. When he was asked, what do you consider your greatest recovery? You know what his humble reply was. Amazing. That shows that he is a man who took a step. When he was asked that, he responded humbly, I have made two important discoveries in life, he said. Number one, I know that I am a great very great sinner. That's this discovery. Have you discovered that you are a great sinner? And number two, he said that I have discovered and I know that Jesus is even a greater Savior. That's taking a stand. That is taking a stand, my brother and sister. Have you ever realized that you are a great sinner? A very great sinner. A chief sinner, as Paul the Thorne says. And the Savior that you serve is the Savior, a great Savior who's able to set you free, who's able to give you life, who's able to give you life eternal. Praise God, praise God. So here, yeah, friends, let's look at these three kinds of people, okay? Number one, verses 4 and 5 and 10 to 17 verses 4 and 5 and 10 and 17 talking about Ahab and Jezebel now what does the scripture say about 4 and 5 for so it was while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah had taken 100 prophets and hidden them 52 a cave and had fed them with bread and water and Ahab had said, Obadiah, go into the land to all the springs of water and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive so that we will not have to kill any livestock. Now see, Ahab and Jezebel, if you know and if you have read about them, they are very wicked people. Ahab was a wicked king. Out of all the bad and wicked kings in Israel, you are the worst, I should say. Because he promoted idol worship. He allowed people to worship, and Jezebel was his queen. And 
And she was worshipping her. Another goddess called Asherah. So Baal and Asherah. Baal, I think, Asherah was Baal's wife. Like Jezebel was Baal's, uh, Ahab's wife. So this, this idol worship was promoted all the more in Israel at that time. These people, you know, they continue that they remain unbroken under God, just like so. It was, the, it was the judgment of God. Now, COVID-19 is not a judgment of God, it's life. That's something that you and I have to face in a fallen world. If there is a judgment, you will not be able to protect yourself by wearing a mask. If there is judgment. Or wearing gloves or putting, making, getting your hands sanitized. You will not be able to rescue or escape judgment. It is life. You have to face it as they come. Okay? Here, these people, they remain unbroken under God's judgment. There was a lot of problems in the, in the nation. This time, there was no rain for three and a half years. But he remained unbroken. We read in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 29. Proverbs 11, 29. That is the power of error. Proverbs 11, 29. What happened to the slides? We are not getting slides. Anyway, you turn your Bible and get that thing marked. These are people, those who are so cold, they were cold. They destroyed the Lord's prophet, verse 4 says. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind. Proverbs 11, 29 says. So Ahab, when he said that Elijah was the troublemaker, but Elijah turned around and said, you are the one. You are the one who worshipped other gods and provoked God into anger. So he said, he who troubles his own house will inherit the wind. Proverbs says. So these people, they destroyed God's prophet. Very specially, Jezebel was very angry. And he did not want God's people to be around. He did not want God's prophets to be around, teaching people God's ways. They began to destroy them left and right. They tried to overcome God's judgment by human efforts. Verse 5. And he had sent him to Obadiah, go into the land, to all the springs of water and all the brooks. They have must have thought just because uh, uh, just because uh, Elijah did not obey his God Baal, would that be the cause for this trouble? That could have been what Ahab was thinking. But that was not the case. It was God's judgment that came upon when Elijah said, Until at my word there shall be no rain in this land for three and a half years, there was no rain. That was the that was the judgment. And it affected human beings, it affected animal world, it affected the, the, the atmosphere. Everything changed. They tried to overcome God's judgment by human efforts. He wanted to protect people. He wanted to protect animals, not people. That's why he says, go well, look for a place where my horses and mules can be fed. They are dying. Want to protect them, not the people. He never talks about people here, he's talking about his animals. See how hard his heart is? He had his concern for his animals, not for people of them, or for his soul, for the souls of people. Not concerned. He accuses the man of God of being the source of trouble in verse 10 and verse 17. Verse 10 and verse 17. He accuses the man of God. He said, you are the man who brought trouble into his tribe. <laughs> Friends, no amount of hardship will soften an unbeliever's heart unless God performs a work of grace in him or in her. 
Nothing happens. Hearts have to be changed. No miracle, no wonder, no sign will change the hearts. Elijah was going to meet Ahab. And then 
Elijah tells Obadiah, you go and tell King Ahab that Elijah is here. And then Obadiah gets so scared. Obadiah was the, was the administrator of the palace. He was the one who was taking, taking charge of the, of the works in the palace for Ahab. But he was a man who feared the, feared the Lord. He secured the workforce to work in the palace. And then Obadiah said, why are you telling me that? Because he's waiting to, he's waiting to kill you. And now when you say that you are here and I go and convey that message to the king, and suddenly the spirit of God takes you away, then what happens to me? He will kill me. That was Obadiah's plan. But you know what I want to talk to you about is the people, those who are so committed to the Lord. They were so committed to the Lord. Especially Elijah and even Obadiah. Obadiah, Obadiah while he was working in the palace, he gave shelter to many prophets of God. You remember? 50 to a game. 50 to a game. 50 to a service. 50 to a service. 50 to a game. Okay. Here we see Obadiah helped God's people, prophets. While Jezebel was trying to kill them, Obadiah protected them and fed them. That's why I said that he was a man who feared the, feared the Lord while working there, while serving the king. He protected God's people. But he was working under a wicked king. So in, even in a secular world, you can work in a, in, a, in a place and your master or the boss of your place might be a wicked man. But do you have the strength to take a stand for the Lord? Huh? Maybe you don't. Many don't. Now when we moved into this house in 1984, why did we get started in Egypt? There's a man here and he came and said, oh, all right, yeah, so have a this is with us man. We can have, you know, one spirit in this place and we will work together in this, uh, in this scheme and uh, so glad to have you. So, Vesaki. And during Vesaki, he wanted me to light, cat, light his lamps. They normally light lamps for no, Vesaki. And he was putting all those hands around and going, and then he said, This is the area that you will have covered, and you'll have to light your lamp. So I told him, I'm so sorry, Mr. Silva. I can't do it. That's against my faith. Since that day, he got very angry with me, you know. He said, Petitions, and he did everything to stop this work. That was in 1991, 92, of that day. He tried everything to stop this work. When we were a very small group, we started with about five people and we were a very small group by then and he made every effort to stop this work. But is it God's work? He allowed that work to be cut. He allowed that work to grow. Hallelujah. See, taking a stand. Taking a stand. sister who said that you know people are coming to get the rooms rent. I mean she, she, she was asked to give rooms uh, rent. So when people were coming and the discussion was on and she has said please you are not supposed to worship other things here in this house. If you want temple is up there you can go to the temple. Please not here. People who came in. So they all went away. They all went away. But this sister took a stand. You, this is what I mean. Now we as Christians, we need to take a stand. Where these evil things that are happening around us, we need to take a stand where there is no compromise on us. You cannot compromise. And also then being a Christian. Being a Christian, there is no compromise. You have to make a stand. You have to be wise. And as to how you are doing it, I remember a group of young people coming here and asking me to asking me to give them funds and things for uh, for uh, dancing. You know, during Vesak, they have been dancing. 
so I spoke to them and I told them why I cannot do it. I didn't agree with them. And they understood the boys, about 25 boys, young boys. And they said, we honor your faith. Thank you very much for informing us about this. And they went. Since then, they never came. <laughs> Not troubled at all. But you take a stand, my dear friends. People don't like to be sad. For their faith, they don't like to take a stand. Just because they want to get their child into the school, they will say, yes, I'm so, I'm so, I'm that, that, I'm this, but not a Christian. Because if you say that you're a Christian, they will not take your child to the school. A lot of problems. I don't know whether you have gone through these kind of things. But I'm here to exhort you, to encourage you. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, He has His way for you. Amen. Take a step. Take a step to the Lord. Are you going to be wise as to what you are going to do? Each case is different. The way that you handle the case that I handle might be you can handle it differently. Okay? I don't know how you are doing it, but without compromise. That is what God calls us to do. Because we say that while these hard-hearted people and while they were continuing their lives in unbelief, God had a few remain committed to him without any compromise. Now you have to decide for yourself. Elijah and Obadiah were preserved during this time by God. Because God always preserves a remnant. Not the majority, a remnant. He always has a remnant. That's a verses 3 and 4. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 22. Philippians 2, 22. It says, All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. See, in Caesar's household, they were believers. Not compromising the faith. This is very hard, very hard when you have clashes with all the other kinds of religions together. Very hard. God's people, for very this reason, just because you are not compromising your faith, for this reason, you will be persecuted. Are you afraid of persecution? Are you afraid of losing? Many people, many Christians will be persecuted for their stand for the Lord, for their stand, for their faith. They'll, they'll start talking ill of you. They'll say that you're a troublemaker. Of course, they will call you that. The Lord's servants, God's people, must be bold. They must be bold. Amen. We worship a living king. We worship a living God. That's why Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. It says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. See? Righteous are bold as a lion, the Bible says. But the wicked flee when no one pursues. So my dear friends, the Lord's people and the Lord's servants must be bold and they are bold fearing God more than man today the situation is people fear people when you fear people God displeases you God wants you to fear him now even in our church set up we see that thing our children and our people, most of them, they are they are so frightened of the past. All the elders. What profit should we gain out there? We are just mere human beings. Another sinner like you. And you feel 
fear me more than you fear God. You prove it in your action and in your day to day work. Don't do that. You fear the Lord. Who are we to be feared? Just because we, because of this work that we are doing, we are to be honored. That's another thing. Not to be feared. Why do you fear me? These are the same story in Acts chapter 4, right? Acts chapter 4 or 5. We are apostle uh, chapter 5, 29, where he says, We fear God more than men. And they continued to speak about Jesus. Then they were asked by the council not to speak about Jesus. Apostles went about speaking about Jesus. Fearing God more than men is what God expects of each and every one of us. Fear Him. When you fear the Lord, you know what happens? The Lord helps His true people, His true servants. The Lord helps His true servants. You take a stand for the right thing and the people will get angry with you. But since you are being on God's side and doing the right thing and taking a stand for the right thing, you know the end result? You'll be victorious. You'll be honored at the end of the day. Even though they will not embrace your religion or embrace your faith, but they will honor you. They'll say, He's a man of God. He stands for his faith. This is what we need to be friends. In our Christian world, at least we don't see this happening. We don't see this happening. We have to take a stand for our faith while we honor other faiths, right? Yeah, you need to honor the other people and their faith. It is only God. I, so, I told you, unbelievers cannot be changed by our works or by our shouting. It is the grace of God. It is the work of God. As I told you earlier. So here, we see that the people, those who remain faithful to the Lord, those who remain committed to the Lord, they were hot people. And the first group was very cold. Right? And the second group that we see, they are hot. They are hot for God. They didn't mind being persecuted. They didn't mind being losing things. Don't be aware of what? Afraid of losing things. Yeah, those things don't matter at the end of the day at all. Suddenly, your life is gone and with it, everything is gone. And somebody will come and those who have never labored or worked for it, will enjoy it. Is that what you want me? Take a stand for the Lord. Live for Him. As Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Do you have second thoughts about this? I think the challenge, the Lord is challenging you and me this morning for this. The Lord helps his true servants. Verses 19 and 20. See, he says, Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So he has sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the big prophets together on Mount Carmel. Now Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. Challenges. Ahab. And he said, do you want to see who the real God is? Okay, we'll do that. Get your prophets. Let them offer a sacrifice. Don't put any fire under. When the sacrifice is consumed by the fire that comes from heaven, comes from above, when the fire comes from above and consumes the sacrifice, he is the true God. They all agree because they were the majority. Now. They never thought that they were wrong. Majority always think like that. No? They always think that they are not wrong. But you see, they were wrong. 
Because they cried from morning till evening, no God, no, no, fire, no answer at all. They went on hurting themselves also, bleeding. Came and pleaded, bail to come. There was no bail. There is no such God like that in this world. Only devil. Only Satan. There is only one God. Who created the heavens and the earth and you and me and everything around us. Only one God. He expects us to worship Him. We are here to worship Him. We are here to honor Him and glorify God in each one's life. So friends here, we read that. How God helped His people. Verse 20. See verse 20. He says, So He had sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Here, 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 here obeyed Elijah. Here, we with Elijah. And he was a man who wanted to kill Elijah. But see how he earned God's favor in that. Father says, Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1. The king's heart is in the Lord's hand. And he turns it the way as he turns a, a brook of water. It's in the hands of the Lord. So as Christians see what authority you and I have. When you are on the Lord's side, you can't get God on your side, okay? That's a wrong understanding. You cannot get God on your side, but you have to be on God's side. And if God is for you, who will come against you? Romans chapter 8, verse 1 reminds us. Amen. Yeah. Always make sure that you are on the Lord's side. If I ask you, who is on the Lord's side today? Who is on the Lord's side? If you raise, slip your hand up. If you raise your hand up and say, yes, I'm on the Lord's side. Would you? Or you have doubt so? Yeah, sometimes I'm with the Lord, but sometimes I'm not here. That's what we are. But this is the reminder. Take a stand. I'm on the Lord's side. Then any problem, any situation that I face, I cry out to the Lord, and the Lord comes. Would you mind? Let's go, right? I'm sure most of you have had that experience in your life. How God has saved you, how God has rescued you of your situation. Because you cried out to the Lord. Continue to be faithful to Him, my friends. Continue to be faithful and honor God in everything that you do. In your family, in your work, in your neighborhood, everywhere, wherever you are. So here, the Lord is so merciful and gracious to His people. And He is always, His favor is always with His people. Only if you are on His side, okay? Not if you are a Christian or if you are a, if you are a religious person. If you are on the Lord's side. And if you are on the Lord's side, you will be one like Obedai and you will be one like Elijah. Amen? Because then you will stand and then you will say, in spite of all the problems, you know, when Elijah was asked to go and present himself in verse chapter 17, verse 1, he goes and he meets up with, El with, with Ahab. And he presents himself and says, Unless, until at my word, there's, you will not, not, not have rain in, in this land for three and a half years. So he disappeared. And the Lord took care of him. You remember? We studied that. He was taken to uh, heaven, and then from there he was taken to the widow. And then how the Lord took care of his servant there. Performing miracles after miracles. Be on his side. Don't try to get him on your side. Don't just be, don't, don't just be a, be, be, be a talking Christian, but be a, be a committed and a working Christian. Amen. This is what is lacking in the church today. They will come out and say all kinds of things. All kinds of things. I love God. I love God. I know that He protects me. I know that He's on my nonsense. In, in, in their lives, they won't show it. I trying to fall? Who am I trying to fall? No commitment. Life is not committed to the Lord. People are talking about God and say all nonsense. We read that. <laughs> I will tell you. I'm sure you are also reading this. I also read this. 
Elijah. Ahab obeys Elijah's instructions. That's how God showed his mercy and his favor upon this man. That's why I told you God is always, he's always helping his true people. Amen. And for that, make sure that you are inside of this. Third part. The third group of people. The first group is Ahab and Jezebel. The old The unbelieving. Hard, hard people. Secondly, we see the heart group. Elijah and Obadiah. Now thirdly, the new form. On the cross we said, the new form. Verses 21 to 24. This is what we read in there. Okay? And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, Not a word. Fair, did they? But the people answered him, Not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it, cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other wood, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. <laughs> they liked it. Because they were the majority. They thought, yes, this is going to happen, man. You are going to lose, Elijah. We have, we have 850 altogether, 400 of Asherah and 450 of Baal, prophets. And Elijah was a lonely man. So they thought, yes, we take up the time. Let's do it. And they did it from morning till evening. Nothing happened. Elijah fooled them, man. Very hilarious there. He said, your God must be going on a journey. He must be fast asleep. Shout furthermore so that he can be awakened. <laughs> hilarious. There is nobody. There is no God in this world who can help people except God Jehovah who revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. No other. No other. Jesus is Yesterday or day before, uh, a lady called me. Immediately I sensed that she was Jehovah's Witness. I said, you are Jehovah's Witness, right? You don't believe in Jesus Christ as God, right? I cannot have a constructive discussion with you. Thank you for your call. But in harsh, I take a stand. I said, Jesus is my God, Jesus is my Lord, and he is the creator of this heaven that here. Don't agree with that. We have no discussion. How can we have a constructive discussion? If you don't agree, right? Finally, we will blame each other, we will shout at each other, then we will end up in a, in a fight. Why? And Jesus, you just come into your homes. How do you do? You just let them talk to you and allow them to sell their books. You don't want to hurt them. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? And say, if you don't believe Jesus Christ is God, and if you don't believe the Holy Spirit is a person, if you don't believe God is my Father, out. I have nothing to do with you. No discussion. Why? If you go to discuss, because you don't know the scriptures, most of you, you can't handle it, they will convince you. And they will confuse your mind. That's what these false teachers do. Of course. They confuse the minds of Christians. So here, that's what we need to do. We cannot be lukewarm when it comes to that. We have to take a stand. Cannot be lukewarm. The people of Israel, they struggled on the fence. The Bible says, they did not speak a word. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5 says, You are Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. No other. My prayer is that throughout the 
COVID-19 period that whatever you have learned and the commitments that you have, the ways that you have, that you have made decisions in your life to follow the law, continue to do that. Take a stand for the law. We need to take a stand for the law. Only a remnant will do that. Only a remnant. You don't have any people in that. Only a remnant. So my dear friends, the lukewarm, the double-mindedness, we can't be on the fence. A lot of people have been divided hearts. Their affections are divided, their loyalties are divided. They're not committed. Even when we come to the local church, you must be committed to the local church. Your loyalties cannot be divided in the local church. Because God has placed you in the local church, so be true and be faithful to that local church. And work for God's kingdom to come through that. That is God's plan in the world. Through a local church. And that local church must be governed by plurality of elders, not just one man. We have spoken about these things. Double mindedness in our day. Religious pluralism. They will oh, you are, yeah, it's alright. <laughs> like five of us people say, oh, you are a Buddhist, be a Buddhist, you are a Christian, be a Buddhist, you are a Hindu, be a Buddhist. Believe me also. And he died. He died. Like Tosika de Sankhante. Tosekade Sankar, you know the concept of Tosekade? You just walk into Tosekade and you have so many pictures, you know, lighting lamps and Hatu Kuru in there. <laughs> you know, money god, evil gods, you know, those who will, Unyam god, Katagam god, all these gods, you know, right around. And at the end of it, you have Mother Mary and you have Jesus Christ also. Have you seen that? You haven't been to Tosekade? That is Tosikal Sankar, they call it. Religious pluralism. But Joshua said, he said, me and my house will serve the Lord. I don't know what you will do, but this is my decision. Me and my house we will serve the Lord. No matter what happens, no matter what come, come, come may, we will serve the Lord. Joshua said. 24-15. So dear friends, God and Mammon, the other obstacle that people have, they are very double-minded with their money. Those who have money, they are so very afraid of getting involved, getting themselves committed, because they never spend money. God and Mammon, Matthew 6, 24 says, you cannot serve two masters. And Colossians 3, 5, 6 says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Wrath of God is coming upon disobedience. People don't like to talk about wrath of God also. If you don't agree with the wrath of God, you are not a Christian. Bible says God is a consuming fire and you have something else other than God in your life you are in trouble my dear brother Jesus. that's why I say that you need to take a step God and man God hates divided hearts he can't work with divided hearts Psalm 119, verse 113, Revelation 3:15, Joshua 4, 4 24, 15, Matthew 12, 30. Beautiful scriptures. I want you to take a note because we don't have enough time to go through all that, but I'll see. I'll read Psalm 19, 13. I hate the double mind, but I love your law. God's law says, take a stand for me. I'm your God. No other. Take a stand for me. That's God's law. Amen. And David says, I hate the double mind. David was on God's side. 
and God helped him to take it. Very easy situation. Even when he fell into sin, God sent his prophet to convict him so that he repented and came back to God. Matthew 12, 30. He who is not with me against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. He who does not gather with me scatters. You gather or you scatter. Take a step. Take a step. The Israelites, they responded to Elijah. In great silence, first they give us this. They were on the fence. But in the James chapter 1, verse 22, tells us that we are not to be hearers, but to be doers. James 1 22. So, my dear brother and sister, if you are on the fence, I just want to force you out of that fence this morning. <laughs> if you are on the fence about your faith, about your following God, I want to push you off that fence. And you fall either to that side or to this side. Elijah, he forced all these people off the fence by challenging them. Verses 22 and 24. Elijah offers a, a challenge for the prophets of Baal. They could not, they could not refuse it. They agreed. They agreed to it. And Elijah offered that challenge. And he reminded these people, if you want rain, you want rain, you have to repent first. Repent first. You want blessing in your life? Repent first. Put your life together. Put your life right together. Repent first. Today people are talking about prosperity theology and telling people you just cry out to your God, He will bless you. No! That's not the God of the Bible. God of the Bible says, take a stand for me. Are you on my side? Are you on my side? Then I will be on your side. You can't get me to your side. That's religion. That's paganism. They're trying to get God to their side. So dear friends, Elijah told the people that they must repent before rain can be given. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 35 and 36. Is it like to repent? Then the rain will come. If you don't repent, no rain. Suffer. Amazing, isn't it? The challenge. But we are not supposed to, you know, make some, that kind of challenges okay today. You do it with yourself, and don't tell it other people. Do it with yourself. Learn the word, and believe the word, and allow the world to break, word to break you on the inside, and you make that decision. We are free to make such challenges today. But we have to prove it by our lives. as we understand about these three kinds of people in the world. Is your heart hardened by our belief? Do you believe the Lord? Are you committed to the Lord? Or are you coming? Let's rest our feet and repent. Father, we just want to thank you for reminding us and thank you. You are a good God, gracious God, and we worship you this morning, Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise.